word problems. So I'm going to get you started with that. So if you go to page 12, you should see something like this. And I'm just going to get... I think I just want to briefly review what we did uh, towards the end of yesterday, right? So you're going you're gonna to come across the notation. We're going to use notation a bit more. So intersection obviously means where they meet um, and what they share in common. And so if it's subset, it, it looks like this because right, the whole circle's inside of it. Um, when it's union, we want to combine the sets that are at play. And by the way, this expands to three Venn diagrams later on, but it's the same idea. Um, then you have the minus, the minus with the backslash like this. If it's A, not B, it's basically saying A, but not B. We're, we're talking about only A in this case. Mark my words with the only. If you hear only, only A or uh, students that are only walking, then it's just this. We don't even want to touch the intersection. Okay. And uh, if it's not it, right, you obviously take your universal and subtract it from it. How about I will, I will introduce that formula here for you. Emphasizing, this is page 10. So if you want, a of not, sorry, N of not A, the complement, the best way to do it is take your universal and subtract N of A. And by the way, A could be W, it could be H, it doesn't matter, but the same, same uh, steps would apply. Okay. Can I just say that this is the complement, right? And some of you might, uh, I know when you were doing the homework, you were scratching, like, why are you doing it this way? Why don't you just go to your diagram and count whatever isn't A? It's still okay to do that, but often you won't have a Venn diagram. So then you have to resort to this. Okay. All right. Let me just uh, double check here because I've made some notes. All right. Go to 12. And from time to time, you're going you're gonna to see, read, or hear me talk about the principles of inclusion and exclusion. Uh, for short, I call that pi. I think we can all remember that one. Principles of inclusion and exclusion, right? Um, when you're provided with the number of elements in certain sets uh, and you need to determine the number of elements in other sets, we use the following principle, okay, pi. And I wish I could tell you there's just one formula, one magic formula, but there isn't. Um, I will just show you the one that I always use and it works for me. If you at any point realize, wait a minute, he did it this way, I bet you I can do it another way, you're probably right as long as you come up with the same answer, right? Uh, so when, you, when you're thinking, why is, it, why, is, why is he doing it that way? Because I'm looking at this, I'm seeing a different angle to it. Go for it if you see that, right? So here we go. The number of elements in the union of two sets is equal to the sum. I'm not gonna read that, sorry. This is the formula right here. So the number of elements of the union of two sets, right, would be, this is how you would find it. You take the number of elements in A, Take the number of elements in B and then subtract the intersection. Why would you subtract the inter intersection? Because if you just add A and B together and they share elements, then you're double counting. Okay, So that's why you need to take away the intersection. Right? That's really what it comes down to. Or uh, you may see this one here. And that's where I made a note I'm just going to tell you to not use this one. If you if you were to look at these two, it's just this one is uh, me rewriting the original. I'm just literally 
flip-flopping the last two here. So I'm not going to use this one. Um, because on your study sheet, if you just have this one, you're going to be all right. You're going to be able to do this. That way you don't have to be like, why is there another formula? Now I'm confused, right? So just use this one. This is the principle. This is pi right here in a nutshell. Okay. Um, and obviously if these sets were not, were disjoint, then this would not, we, we wouldn't have to worry about subtracting the intersection because they don't share anything in common, right? So just keep that in mind. Another thing I want you to remember, so I'm going to highlight this box for sure. This is study sheet uh, for sure. Okay. Another thing, I'm going to use a different color for this one, is I really want you to hone in on this. Note that the union of A or, or B, right, like uniting them, does not include outliers. So should I maybe, I think I'm going to make, make it stand out. Whatever you can do to make it stand out, really say, hey, like pay attention to that one. Remember, when you, when you find the union, you're not including outliers. Why is he repeating himself so many times? Because I've marked a lot of exams and tests. Right? So remember, the union does not include any outliers. I've said it like three or four times now, right? I think you... You probably are starting to let it sink in. And um, I'm going to try something here. I'm going to skip uh, some of these examples that I have following. And there's a reason for it. I might come back to them later, but I think we can do without these examples. I've tried it before. It works pretty well. So I'm going to skip. I'm going to skip forward a couple of pages. And we're going to go straight to 15. And if you've had me before, you know that I can always go back later and, and review things, right? Like I'll be like, now that we've done this, maybe let's look at some more, like I'll, I'll explain it in a different way. But for now, I'm just going to go to page 15. All right, so Venn diagrams and word problems. So we're going to stick with two sets. I'm going to highlight that heading so you know we've covered that, right? <clears throat> So here's where I'm going to put that pi principle into practice. Okay. So let's read this. During the pandemic, um, a school sent out surveys to 50 homes asking what types of devices were available to students. Okay. So I think this is important, right? 50 homes. That is actually our universal set right there. That is what we have to pick from. So I will make a note here. That is your universal. They're setting the stage for you. Um, and let's keep reading. 30 students were able to access a tablet. 25 students were able to access a computer. We call it C T. If there's no if there are no letters given, you just make one for that set, okay? And then it says five students had access to neither. When you see that, neither, what will you think about there? What does that does that tell you? It's inside a set or outside a set? Outside a set. That'll be our outlier. If if the question says that, right? So we'll call those outliers. There are five outliers in this set. So I, I'm going to tell you something. There, not every example, there's not a single example that will cover all bases. So you just have to read carefully here. First thing, draw a Venn diagram and fill out the info provided. With, fill it out with the info provided. So let's do that here. A, we know that there's two sets. It's quite apparent. I'm going to... I'm going to ask you here, is this a joint set or is it, is it a disjoint set? How would you know? Here's where I would, this is what I, this is the test. This is how I check. Our sets 
joint or disjoint. Okay. That would that would be because they're not telling us that students have both, right? The question isn't saying anything. So what I'm going to do is this. Watch. I'm going to just check. I'm going to add what they give me. 30 plus 25 plus the 5. What does that add up to? 60, right? But we are told what? Our universal is 50, correct? So when we add everything up, we're double counting. We are double counting, right? Because we have more than what we should have versus 50. Okay? Therefore, joint sets. This is a little trick that I, I, I don't think it's really a trick, but I think a, a quick way to find out, okay, these sets are overlapping for sure, because if we just count them, if they weren't overlapping, if you just added them up, it should add up to our universal. Okay, so that, that way we know our Venn diagram will look like this. Okay. A lot of them are, uh, folks, they are joined. Okay. Almost all of them are. Make a U up here, and we know that this is 50. So you will notice that I'm going to start just putting numbers in, representing the number of elements that are in there, not individually listing them. Okay. So universal is 50. T, I'm going to put that up here. We are actually given an amount. We're, we're told that the elements inside T is 30. That's the number of elements. For C, we know it's 25. And five, in this case, it's neither, so we're going to put that out here. Okay. So that's as far as we can get. Right. Is there anything else we can fill in so far? I would argue no. Right now, you can't. You need a little bit more information. So let's go on to B. How many students were able to access both? Access both, right? A tablet and a computer show your work. Um, let me see here how I did that. I did it underneath, underneath my Venn diagram. That's where I'm going to do the work. But if you think of notation, if I ask you what notation would uh, kind of represent this scenario, the question is asking the number of students that that are have access to both? This is the question mark. And uh, I'm going to use, I'm going to highlight here as well. Maybe I should do green, right? This, this part right here, there, I'm asking for this section here. We kind of butchered it a little bit. Apologize. But that's, this would be the notation that would represent our scenario here. That's what we're asking for. And 9 times out of 10, pi is going to solve your problem. Okay, It solves my problem when I'm, when I'm sad. I'll just have pi. It makes me feel better. Uh, but So use pi. The principle of inclusion and exclusion. And this is what pi says. If you take n of uh, t or c, right? The union, go down in this direction, there. If you unite both of these sets, you would have to go n of t, right? So that first set we're talking about, plus uh, the uh, all the students that have access to a computer, minus n Hey, I have a box of photocopying for you. Perfect. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate that. That's what I was missing. Perfect. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I don't want to feel like I'm going to, if I highlight it all the way, it kind of just erases everything. It's hard to see. 
but this is pi right here. This is this is the the formula that I'm asking to use when I refer to that. Are you with me? Early morning, I know. So you start with this. The union of all these sets does not include the outliers. Remember I said it like three times? Okay. So this is what I do to come up with this number. I go 50. So to get this one, I would just go 50 minus 5. What's N of T? Do I know that? Yep, it's 30. What's N of C? I know that as well, 25. Minus this guy. Don't know this one. That's the only unknown there. And if, if you think about it, you, will, you should be able to come up with everything except for the one piece here. Five mi 50 minus 5 is 45. 30 plus 25 is 55. I'm going to call this X right now to not have to write down the same thing over and over again. What do I do here? I want to get rid of this. I want to isolate X. Minus 55, minus 55. I end up with negative X. And this will be 45 minus 55 is negative 10. So don't be scared when you get that negative X. It's perfectly fine because it's going to cancel out in a bit, right? We're going to divide both sides by negative 1 and then problem solved. So we now found out um, 10 students have access to both. And what you will find is once you find the middle, it's a puzzle. It just all falls in line. Once you have the middle, I'll show you. It's pretty, it's pretty cool afterwards. And I'm going to use a red pen at, at this point to go back to my Venn diagram. I would always ask you to do that regardless of what the question asks you afterwards. So we're going to take the 10, go back to my Venn diagram, and what we found is this right here. We know that, and I will actually uh, make a note, that is N of T meets C. Right, that sliver right there. So if this is 10, then what's this over here? Well, 30 altogether, right? So you would go 30 minus 10 to go 20 here. So I'm actually going to show that work. 30 minus 10 is equal to 20. So if you think about it, 20 and 10 adds up to my 30, right? Over here on this other side, 25 minus 10 is 15. So 15 goes in here. And what would these numbers represent? If I asked you, what does the 20 represent? That's the number of students that only have a tablet. Like they don't have a, right there, they're not even having a computer. That, and 15 are the students that only have a computer. They would not have a tablet. That's what those these regions represent. Okay. All right, so let's answer here. Uh, C, how many students only had a tablet available? How would you write that notation? Only have a tablet, you would write it like this. T, not C. Um, that'd be 20. 20 students. Only, that's the word, have a tablet. If I'm overdoing it, if you got it like five minutes ago already, uh, I apologize, but you're doing all right. Just hang in there. Okay. How many students only have a computer? In this case, 
I just want computer, not tablet. And that would be 15. Right, so 15 only have a tablet. Oh, sorry, computer. If you, if you ever come up with X as a decimal, you probably did something wrong. Like if you're, if you're using pi and you end up with a decimal, check, go back. Or if you legitimately get a negative, like sometimes you'll, you'll end up with X is positive and this is negative, like something is wrong. Go back and check. You, you probably, I put money down that you probably forgot to take the outliers away from the universal. That's usually the main problem that I see students um, come up with. Okay, E. How many students had at least a computer or a tablet available? And uh, I actually want you to pay attention to that, at least a computer or tablet. It, it's actually asking for the union, like anything inside these two sets would tell you that they have at least this or that, right? Anything in the union has access to either one. So asking for N of T unites C. That's what it's asking for. And uh, I already told you, what is it? We already know it's, I told you over here it's 45. But we can also check 10 plus, sorry, 20 plus 10 is 30 plus 15 is 45, correct? So you can double check, it should all jive. You either go back to the work you've already done so we can say uh, 20 plus 10 plus 15, that's 45, or N of T un unite C, it's N U minus, <clears throat> is it gonna fit? How do you write outliers again? Like that. So you would go 50 minus 5, that is 45 as well. So let's we'll say 45 students. You can barely see that, can you? Here. 45 students. What did he just do? That's so confusing. Like he's just adding a bunch of numbers and then he's asking me to subtract. Like what's going on here? I'm, I'm telling you that there's more than one way to get there. And it depends sometimes how much information you have. Sometimes you don't know. Like, let's say, for instance, let's say you didn't know all these numbers in here. You didn't, like we did at the very beginning, right? We did not know. So all I did is I went universal, take away the outliers. And that is the union right there. That is 45. We know it's 45. We don't know the intricate details, but we know it's 45 between the two sets. Okay. Ultimate check, guys. This should all add up to 50, correct? So 20 and 10 is 30, 45, 50. Okay. So now you know for sure you have this, right? If you add everything up and it's 60, something went wrong. Okay. I know you're loving it. I know. You can tell. Okay. All right, uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna ask you to try uh, 17 right now. And while you do 17, I'm gonna see which questions I want you to try for homework. Can I just, can I warn you? 17 students liked summer only. So you have to be careful where you're gonna put that number in your Venn diagram. Just try it. I, I'll, I'll, pick, I'll pick it up uh, either tomorrow or later today. We'll see how Mark, I want you to try, you can try 178 as well, but just focus on 
on these questions. Bottom of 17, I have that there, bottom of page 17. So I'll do one more with you. Um, and let's see how this goes. If I go a little bit fast, I'll, I'll, I can uh, clarify tomorrow. But we have 35 students in a class. Uh, I'm going to start with my Venn diagram. I know that's probably not what they're asking you first and foremost. Did anybody try to add this up already? Uh, we have 28, 33 with all of them. And uh, I'll tell you why. I, I tell you why you know you know this is joint though, right? Because of this winter and summer. So just follow it like that. This tells you it's joint. So start with your Venn diagram. We know that union is 35. And I'll explain why the check that I asked you to do earlier doesn't apply here because it's, at, it's telling us there is something overlapping there. Okay. So we'll put that 11 here. Uh, this is summer. This is winter. The 17 only, when it says only, summer only, where would that go? It actually goes right here. It's just this section right here. We know 35, we know 17, we know 11. Can we figure out this number here? Are we able to, with the information we're given, to come up with that? And I would say yes, right? You just add them up. That's 28, right? You use these two numbers to give me that 28. So I already know that. I know that five did not like either season, so that would be out here, five. So you fill in what you know, and then you go from there, okay? Determine the number of students that like winter only, like just this number. Is there a way to figure that out right now? And the answer is no, okay? I will say use pi. Use pi to come up with that. So here it is. Pi, what is pi again? Well, the union of the two sets. It would be the sum of the first set plus the sum of the second set minus the overlap. Just try it and see what you can come up with. This part right here is what? 35 minus 5. Always take away the outliers. NS, we already know. It's 28. Do we know NW? We don't. Even with the information that we're given, we're, we don't know. That's our unknown. Do we know the overlap? Yes, we do. So essentially, you'll always have one left over, one thing that isn't known to us we'll figure it out right now okay so 35 minus 5 is 30 28 minus 11 that's 17 plus nw i think that one is easy enough to write out as is without turning it into an x then in this case we're going to subtract 17 so nw is 13 Right? So 30 minus 17 is 13. This is not answering the question, though. What is this giving us right now? The 13, where are we going to put that? I'm going to use a red pen for that. The 13 goes here, because that's N of W. Can we now figure out what this is? 13 minus 11, right? Okay. You're smart. That's 2. So I, it didn't ask you for a Venn diagram, but I would argue strongly always do draw your Venn diagram. So there you have your two. That is answering A. A is asking for number of elements that are winter only, not summer, is two. Okay? Two students. 
only like winter. Um, what about or, the or part? Well, they're asking for this, and you know what? We know this already. It is 30. Or you can just add up all the whatever is inside the set and come up with 30 as well. Okay? And Venn diagram is already done. I know I rushed a little bit. I apologize. Um, you know what? Make sure you practice. Even if you get stuck, I'll take that. I'll take it from there and get you unstuck, right? But start the car, start driving, and see if you can make it through, right? Um, I'll see you tomorrow, guys.